Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Max Sillingworth and in this video I will share with you a nice blitz game that I played yesterday against a Fide Master on chess.com. I think you'll find this game really useful for learning some key English opening ideas, especially how to play when a bishop is on b4 or on c5. So let's get into the game. So I was playing white in this game and I started with the move g3 here uh, in tribute to Paul Benko, uh, the American-Hungarian Grandmaster who recently passed away. And with g3 it can be a nice transpositional trick in that if they play d5 you can play knight f3 and transpose to a king's Indian attack where they're committed to d5. And if they play e5 as in the game, <clears throat> then I play c4, transposing to an English opening with e5. And usually what they play at the highest level is they play knight f6, followed by d5, and uh, aim for this reversed open Sicilian. But my opponent played knight c6, and here I actually started with knight to c3. Uh, the reason for playing knight c3 before bishop to g2 here is that if they play a reverse Grand Prix attack with f5, which I think is one of the better moves in this position, then you get an interesting extra option of playing knight to f3. And then if knight f6, you can play d4 and sort of hit them in the center in a way that wouldn't be so feasible with the knight still being on g1. Uh, so that's kind of the idea of my move order. Uh, the main move for black is to play knight to f6 and only then after bishop g2 to decide whether the bishop will go to c5 or to b4 or even possibly to g7. In the game, black played an immediate bishop to b4 and I immediately noticed that his idea is that he wants to play bishop take c3 and double up my pawns. So what do you think I did about that in this position? Indeed, I played the move knight to d5, which is a pretty typical answer to bishop b4, also asking him <clears throat> what he'll do about the bishop to the knight takes b4 threat. I decided on the move bishop to c5. Uh, in the game I was thinking he might also play knight f6, but after bishop c5, bishop g2. Uh, he played this move d6 uh, and yeah I guess he's still waiting to see which square he'll put the g8 knight on and at this point I sensed that the main move was probably to play e3 but I quite like that idea of starting with knight to f3 and just developing the knight as quickly as possible. Uh, in fact in this position I didn't actually realize at the time what I should do if uh, black plays e4 here. So what do you think white should play against this attack on the knight? So I realized after the game that the move knight g5 could actually be quite a nice one here. And the point is that basically if they take the knight then you can play knight take c7 and pick up the rook in the corner. And Okay, the position is still quite complex as the knight will get trapped. But because the king is stuck on d8 and you know, why it's not really down material, even if black wins the knight, uh, then this would indeed be a very promising position for white here. And if they play knight f6 instead of knight to e7, then I guess you can just castle and personally I like the approach of playing e3 and I find this to be a generally quite strong answer when the bishop is on c5 where we just kick the bishop away and fight for an advantage in the center that way. I mean it's one thing to keep in mind with the English opening is that true we're not pushing our central pawns immediately but it means we're just going to do it at a later stage. So after knight g7 and castles yeah I thought he might play knight takes d5 and play into this structure uh, if he does, then after takes, takes, and knight d4, 
Well, I would have probably taken and... And then there's an interesting choice after e3 and bishop to b6 where I think the move the move that I would favor here as white would be to play f4 and I use this flank pawn to increase our central majority and I think in this way we'll get a, a pleasant advantage a small but pleasant advantage so after castles and castles I played the move e3 uh, just with the same idea of playing uh, for the quick d4. Uh, to try to avoid this, he played the move bishop to g4 uh, to pin the knight as such. And actually, if he played knight takes d5 instead, then I think this is a better version than what we saw before, where here white has a typical break to gain an advantage in the center. Uh, namely, you can play d4, and after e takes d4, and knight takes d4. This is typically a very pleasant structure for white because of the extra space on d5. And in the long term, we can play to put a lot of pressure against the backward c7 pawn. Okay, it's not technically backward, but it is somewhat fixed in place, you could say. So in the game, black played bishop to g4. Uh, I played the thematic answer of h3, uh, pinning the... Or questioning the pinning bishop and if he plays bishop takes f3 then maybe I even take with the bishop in that case just to be able to prepare the d4 break more easily with the support of the queen uh, though I think queen f3 probably also gives white an advantage so he played bishop h5 and it's why I noticed from my opponent that while he got his pieces developed quite naturally he never really seemed to come up with a good long-term plan in uh, this game. So what do you think is the move that I played here as white? You can pause the video if you need more time to think about this one. So well done if you found the move g4 here. I think it's not really a weakening move at all because a black is not really in a position to attack the white king. And B, it's more important to get in D4 with tempo and attack the center this way. Uh, I think that maybe in retrospect, black could have considered bishop B6 rather than E takes D4 as he played. I think still I would take and we still have a very pleasant position in similar fashion to the game. Where uh, in this case, I guess I'm not forced to play D5 and perhaps could even consider B3 and just start uh, ketoing the other bishop as well. Uh, this is typical for the English opening. Uh, so we had e takes d4, e takes d4. Obviously black can't take on d5 because then he'd have two minor pieces under attack from the pawns. So he played bishop b6. And after knight takes b6 and a takes b6. Well I think this is a somewhat critical position where white does have the bishop pair advantage but it's also the question of how we're going to make use of it here. So, what is the move that I played here as white in this position? So, well done if you found the key move here of pawn to d5. And the reason that d5 is an, is an important move is because black had a positional threat here where my initial intention when playing g4 and d4 was to just play b3 and to just fianchetto the bishop but then i realized that d5 could be a somewhat annoying move just start uh, fixing the d pawn in place and in some ways killing both of my bishops to some small extent maybe white is still better here with the bishop pair but i think that what i played was a lot uh, more effective and i played the move d5 just kicking the c6 knight with a tempo and I think already it's a strategically very difficult position for black because he rather lacks a pawn break here. If he does play knight to e5 then, which is what I expect him to play, I can take on e5 and I think that even f4 is quite a good move then where because of the threat of f5 trapping the bishop, I think he more or less would need to take. And then this is just very much a dream position for white with the bishop pair advantage. Uh, better pawn structure, more central space. So with 
Threats like d6 to mess up black's structure. I do think that white is clearly better here. I mean, if black has to play me like knight c8 to stop d6, then it's already a sign that things have gone strategically quite wrong for black. Even so, this might be better than what happened in the game. Because uh, after knight b4, I think that the move I played more or less refutes uh, black's uh, attempt to get counterplay like this. So, what is your move for white in this position? So, well done if you have found the move I played in the game. I realised that it's actually not a real threat for black to take on a2 in this position, uh, because the knight would end up rather trapped in that case. So, I explored that fact with bishop to d2, simply ignoring uh, black's threat, so that if he does play knight a2, well, then we go queen b3 and the knight simply gets trapped in this case. And if knight c2, then just rook c1 and... I mean, the knight will be lost in this case. And black won't get enough material with a loss of two pieces for a rook. So black tried to move knight to d3 in this position. I uh, simply defended the b2 pawn with a bishop to c3. And actually, after his knight f4 move... Uh, I was sort of a bit lucky not to fall into a trap here. So what's the move you think White should play in this position? Okay, well done if you found the move Rook to E1. I think it's quite an important move because basically if you want to play Queen D4, uh, which I was somewhat close to playing, uh, well I realised in time that Black would have Knight E2 and with this fork he would win the Queen and win the game from here. So rook e1 is quite an important move to turn queen d4 into a serious threat, uh, forking the knight and the pawn. Uh, black played knight takes g2. Uh, I was actually quite happy to see this trade because, well now my bishop is much better than his bishop, which is particularly important in an opposite coloured bishop position. Uh, in the game, I was thinking that maybe his best try is to play f6. It looks very ugly because my knight will just penetrate e6 and white will have a very dominant position. But I thought that this probably gives better chances than what he did in the game. I mean, he can play bishop f7 and at least the game goes on for now. Instead, my opponent played rook to e8. I played queen to d4. And after f6... Uh, it wouldn't shock me if there were several winning moves white at this point. But I think that the one I played was particularly effective. So what is the move that I played as white in this position? So nice work if you found the key move here of knight to g5. Uh, obviously you can't play if takes g5 because of the, the checkmate on g7. But otherwise my knight just comes to e6 and... Let's have a very dominant position and perfectly poised for an attack on the dark squares here. Uh, now, you may have been thinking, well, what if black plays c5 to try and get rid of this battery on the long diagonal? Well, in that case, I can play on passant. And neither a capture really works for black in that knight c6 can run into queen d5 and this is obviously very unpleasant for black. And... I mean, his pawns are also very weak on the queen side. But if he plays the positionally more natural b takes c6, then white has knight e6. And the problem for black is that if you play, say, queen d7, then white has a nice tactic to basically decide the game immediately. Uh, in case you haven't seen it yet, the key move is knight takes g7. And after king takes, then you know, this would just be a standard checkmate, either with queen g7 or if king h6, then the fastest way is bishop d2 checkmate. So he played queen d7, and after knight e6, he actually resigned in this position, and I thought it was maybe a little bit too early, but I do think that it is a technically winning position for white, where either he plays knight c8 to defend against the knight g7 threat but then he gets hit with g5 and you know, this attack on the dark squares is just too overwhelming I think 
or if uh, they play uh, say uh, c5 for example then I guess I'll just play queen f4 and I was just going to play for g5 and I think that ultimately with the plan of just piling everything onto the g7 pawn that long term black just wouldn't be able to keep a defence uh, simply the e6 knight is too strong so that was my nice win uh, with the English opening against uh, Malik02 on chess.com and I'd also like to share a little bit of practical advice as well where I'm sure you all know the feeling of you know, starting a video and not actually finishing it in the end so well done for making it this far and in this game what I noticed is I was actually completely calm and relaxed and I find that when it comes to high performance that our best performances actually tend to happen when we have the least chatter in our minds so when we're kind of not really thinking in terms of words but are just completely in the zone and completely in the moment I find that's at least in my case when uh, we have the best uh, and clearest calculation and when we see the most and I know that in this game I sort of wasn't really worrying about anything you know it's kind of we're just completely in that zone so you're probably wondering well how do you get in the zone in the first place and there are different techniques that uh, different people use but I think that the simplest one that has been the most successful for me is using some simple breathing technique where there are various ones you can find online but I think the simplest one is the box breathing method which is where you basically count to four uh, as you uh, breathe in then uh, count to four in your head as you hold uh, as you hold the breath and then count to four as you breathe out and then count to four as you hold your breath again before repeating starting with breathing in as such so that's one method that worked quite well for me this box breathing and I think the reason it works so well is not necessarily even because of the uh, breathing in itself but just sort of the timing of the the breath and just sort of shifting that focus allows again it's very sort of meditative and relaxing state and I think it's one of the main reasons I'm a lot calmer in the last uh, week or so let's say so thanks for watching the video uh, this is Grandmaster Max Zillingworth here and I'll see you in the next video